Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Chinwag with me, Richard Vobes, on the 30th of August, 2022. Um, we're talking today about screen time and how you avoid it. Everything's done on phones, on laptops, on computers, on little tablet things that you can do amazing things on. They're incredible. You can watch this video on it, which is fantastic. I'm very thankful that you do. Um, but there's everything is online these days, isn't it? I mean, we barely lift a finger and actually manufacture anything physical or chop things or make things with our own hands. Of course we do. Uh, you, you can't wash up online very easily, can you? Unless, of course, you've got an internet-controlled um, a dishwasher or something. But you've still got to physically take the dirty plates and put them in. However, so much, it seems to me, is online that you you just can't escape screens wherever you go. I, I don't know how many screens are made each day at the manufacturers of screens. It must be more screens being made left, right and centre than cars in one form or another. And it seems to be getting worse, even when you're out and about in shop windows. Now, there are television screens, not only vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal, but they're also vertical advertising, catching your eye with moving text and pictures and video and all of this uh, to get your attention so that you might go and buy something. Adverts are, are plastered everywhere. Soon we'll have those big billboards that you see by stations and down, uh, well, on roadsides and things in where buildings once were and they're in the middle of renovating and someone puts up a massive billboard advertising something. Soon they'll be all in moving screens instead of uh, bits of paper that are glued in. All those days you can see. I mean, if you go into London, for example, they're massive, great big LED screens or whatever they are um, that, that used to be around Piccadilly Circus advertising famous brands and all of that. But we carry them around in our pocket, don't we? We even have them on watches these days, these screens that offer us endless, entertain endless entertainment endless consuming of something, uh, whether it's worthwhile or not. But my question today, uh, the talking point that I want to focus on, is how do you escape from those screens? Do you? Do you? Do, does it even occur to you? <coughs> Excuse me. Does it even occur to you that it might be good just to have a bit of a break? If you've been in the office, for example, I mean, I don't know whether people have gone back to the office, uh, whether they're still working from home. My home is my office, so I can't really escape it. Um, but do you, if you've been at your office and you've been there working on the computer and doing whatever it is that you do, uh, then when you come back home, do you then just uh, sit down and or stand up, and wash up and whatever and still put a screen on? I found myself doing the most ludicrous things um, with these screens on particularly YouTube, which is a platform, of course, that I use and I support it because it gives everybody a chance to put up their stuff, whether it's very amateurish or highly professional. Everybody's got a right. It uh, appears to me that to, to put something up on there, um, as long as it's not too, you know, outside their guidelines, which, of course, they they make their own guidelines up. Um, but that's fair enough. That's it. It's a private company, all that business. Um, and I find myself with my phone particularly. Oh, I bung on YouTube. I put it on the side and I'm washing up and I'm listening to something or watching something. But it ultimately, it, it is this screen. Now, I do use, I have to say, I use my phone very much like a radio. I used to listen to the BBC and would put on the radio and listen to the radio. But um, I don't have, what is the new fangled, it's, it's, I say it's new fangled, dab. It's not that new fangled now, is it? Uh, I don't have a dab radio in my kitchen. I don't think where I am I get very much, very many signals and the things that I want to listen to I can't actually get. So um, I've still got the, the normal um, VHF or FM uh, frequencies on the little radio that I have got but it doesn't you know apart from BBC Radio 4 that I used to listen to but I no longer listen to the BBC it's too biased for me um, and so I use my phone as a radio and I'll put on podcasts and I'll put on YouTube videos which are podcast I mean podcast to me is an audio file 
Uh, but many people call their video interviews or monologues or whatever they are podcasts and never quite understand why that is but uh, then I grew up in the early days of podcasting anyway so I use my phone very much for that uh, but also I'll put on you know YouTube to watch things like interviews and things but mostly uh, if I'm you know watching something uh, I may sit on the sofa and I'll, I'll end up watching it in those moments where you're doing not very much you're waiting for somebody or um, you're in between jobs and you think oh I just have a and I find myself constantly picking out going I'll oh, just and I go no no what am I doing this is a bad habit I never used to before we had mobile phones before we could access things like YouTube I'd have to go to the computer and I'd have to switch it on and that would take a little bit of time or indeed the television that would take a bit of time I know people bung their television on in the morning and then they switch them off at night and all day long it's been on I've never been I never understood that I don't have I live on my own um, and I have people come in you know lovely Julia visits me or I go and visit her or other people and what have you but uh, mostly I'm on my own and I enjoy my own company I don't need a television there as just to be on or the radio just to be on but if I'm doing housework or something like that and it's a sort of menu it's nice to have something to listen to I get that but I'm not really talking about that aspect of it I'm talking about the fact that you see walking people kids walking down the street well all sorts of people on their phones watching something I mean we have all these different platforms now not just YouTube all these other ones TikTok and uh, talk to, I, I, by the way, has anyone ever thought of putting a grandfather clock as a video on TikTok? I'm sure that somebody must have, so that you go on TikTok and you just hear a clock. To, anyway, um, yeah, so, but I, what I want to know, though, is are you somebody, not so much that do you do it, it's what do you do to escape them, to get away from them? I love reading. That's my thing. I love reading. I love to sit down. In the winter, for me, there's nothing better than sitting next to my wood-burning stove and reading a good book I, I do tend to nod off in the winter when I'm doing it but in the summer and the winter I still have to light the wood burning stove because that's how I heat my water and cook my dinner and heat the house and dry my clothes so I still have to light that doesn't matter how even on the hottest day I was lighting the SE, much to the annoyance of everybody else. Um, and I would sit there and, and I would read. And I've got loads of books and I love them. The whole range of different types of books that I read. And sometimes I'll just go out, take a stroll down to the seafront. If I've been editing, for example, which I am in deepest edit mode at the moment, the boating video that we've done, Julia and I on the Thames. The second one will be out tomorrow. Uh, Yesterday I was editing that, later on today I should be editing the next episode, takes a bit of time, a lot of thought, but I'm sitting in front of a screen and I need to escape. So I go for a stroll to get out and, and move my body, that's uh, the other important thing, stretch, exercise, and sometimes I'll do that. So instead of, instead of now trying to train myself up, as much as of course I want people to watch my content, um, but I rather try and think of an appointment to view stuff on YouTube and other platforms, an appointment to catch up with my emails. I used to try and someone would send me an email, try and email them straight away back, get back on the screen. But now what I'm trying to do is to say, no, no, I'm limiting my screen time. I'm going to make an appointment to sit down at this time and answer my emails all in one go, bum, 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 till I'm a bit, you know, I've only got one eye, so not, the eye gets a bit tired with screen work. And, I, and then escape it. But in those times when, you know, you're a bit bored um, or you're in between jobs and you're sitting down have a cup, having a cup of coffee, that's the that's the risky time when you start picking it up and then before you know it oh it's only 10 minutes i watched that oh there's another video there's a, that's only 10 minutes 20 minutes have gone you may have only wanted to sit down for five so i want to know what do you do what do you do do you are, are you addicted to your phone to your tablet do you spend hours watching it or do you make an appointment to i'm just going to watch this video this video this video or whatever um and when i've got free time and i'm going to do something else do you play games tiddlywinks do you have an ongoing game of chess with somebody across the world as people do um do you do other things that's what i'm trying to get at or is it just yeah i do my menial tasks and i sit down and then i turn on the screen again um is the is the screen to the rest of our life is that what we're going to be doing are we 
you know, sometimes I feel, and I'm, this is not a conspiracy theory that I'm throwing up here, but sometimes I feel that we're being conditioned to uh, uh, to actually sit down and just not think for ourselves or do things for ourselves, that we'll just go, now that I've finished this task, I will sit here and watch something to take, because it's just easy. It's just, I'm not saying that there is a, that we are being conditioned to do it by some global superpower or anything like that. I don't really think there are these global superpowers. We'll talk about that one in another video. Um, but I think that life has just become so easy that like water, we take the least line of resistance. And because we take the least line of resistance, it's just easy to flop down on the sofa uh, and just pick up the phone and just go, you know, I'll just watch a bit of this. Yeah, it's great. Um, instead of, I don't know, doing something else. What would we have done? I mean, in the old days, you know, you people would come back from work and they would sit down in front of the fire. They might talk. They might have a beer together. They might go down to the ale house. They might be um, doing lots of other chores that perhaps we no longer do, like polishing one's boots and uh, cleaning out the coal scuttle or um, sort of things that, I mean, people have dishwashers, don't they? I don't have a dishwasher, so I have to wash up by hand. I have a certain enjoyment of washing up. I may be a bit strange like that. People may think, oh, you're a bit weird, Vobes. Uh, but I actually enjoy doing things with my hands because I don't do enough. I wish that I had carpentry skills or indeed a little workshop in which to learn how to do carpentry skills. I have got a shed that I could turn into, but it's so full of junk and stuff that I've accumulated that I do need to sort of empty it, I know. And I blame myself. I'm not, you know, it's just pure... I been busy doing other things you know it's always there's but there could, I could make time we could always make time for those things we really want but there's a certain enjoyment about picking stuff up cleaning it and putting it on the side I may not put everything away but um, I do enjoy washing up and there's only me why would I need a dishwasher I used to have a, a girlfriend who lived on her own and she had a dishwasher and she would put everything in the dishwasher and I thought it only takes minutes you know couple of minutes if you've been using a couple of saucepans perhaps something in the oven a a, a a tray in the oven a plate a knife and fork and a cup or a glass or whatever it only takes a few minutes to wash those things up and also I enjoy when in the process of cooking I enjoy washing things up as I go and not just shoving them all into a machine and letting a machine do all the work I do like to feel a little bit autonomous myself that I've got uh, the uh, power to do these things and not rely, not keep relying on these things. Um, and so I like to do things. But what do you do? Uh, you know, with it, if you've got a dishwasher, you, you know, that's sort of like, oh, I just shove it in the dishwasher. And whilst that's going, I can just watch a video or not. Maybe you're just different to me. Maybe you don't pick up your phone. Maybe you don't pick up your uh, tablet or your computer and just sort of, you know, sit there of an evening from six till 10 and just watch the television type thing. Maybe you're busy doing other things. Do you? That's what I'm interested in. What do you do instead of looking at screens? Uh, have you broken that habit or have you not even adopted that habit? Have you found that habit a bit weird that people will pick up? Do you have an appointment to view? These are the questions that I'm asking. So let me know in the comments. I'd be very much appreciated. Uh, and it's great fun to read some of them. We will read some in a second. I just need to blow me old hooter because I can feel that first thing in the morning. Uh, it needs a bit of a hooter blow. Excuse me. And a slurp of coffee. I'm only human. This isn't the BBC in which we cut to a graphic whilst all that goes on. Um, so we were talking yesterday about uh, ghosts do you believe in ghosts it all set off because i was remembering it was my father's birthday yesterday and um i'd never been contacted by him and i wondered you know it was the one time i wonder maybe i would so uh, do you believe in ghosts uh, jazz waz curious name says it's worth looking up james randy who decided many years uh, who dedicated many years researching paranormal claims and exposed them as fakes, including psychics who often refused to be tested. Sadly deceased in 2020, he reached fame exposing Yuri Geller's spoon-bending and evangel evangelistic Peter Popov 
holy water and healing powers scam. Yes, um, I, yes, I was uh, very uh, aware of uh, James Randi, and uh, you can find him on YouTube for many of his TV programs, Chat with a Beard. Um, fascinating, his whole uh, approach. And um, I think he offered some money, didn't he? He offered quite a bit of money if anyone could actually prove something, and, and they never did, as far as I remember. Irvin70 says, good evening, Richard. Lots of people have told me they've seen ghosts. I don't believe it myself. I asked for a, I asked for a haunted room in a Premier Inn in London Road um, in Wellingborough. Room 402, the staff said. I could not have the room as it was taken. They said the bed moves and there's something pushing you. And the door is the one that you have to have diamond patterns on it. Um, I had a look. And they're right about the door. The only thing I can say is there's a pub next door. Oh, there we go. Uh, Anthony Conti says, no way, not ghosts ever. Uh, it's interesting people's thoughts on this. Ingram Cars, my dad is a vicar and taught me growing up to believe in life after death, if we're good. As an adult, I don't believe in life after death per se, but I do believe our spirit lives on through our children and loved ones. Um, and importantly, though, through those who believe we have touched, those who we have touched on life's journey, your parents live on through you, Richard. And I suppose through our DNA, uh, we pick up elements of our father. So as I said, I see in the mirror as I get older, I see my father's face living in me. And I, fit, and I also have picked up his mannerisms later on in life, which I hadn't expected. And I think that's through the subconscious. So I get what you mean, but that's not kind of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that the entity, whatever it is, is, is still somewhere there, is it? I, what I find difficult to believe is that there are billions and billions of people who've existed ever since man. And not just, not just the ones we think, you know, of man. But what about all the um, descendants of man from however they descended? You know, if we descended from the ape and the, the Neanderthal man, ne Neanderthal man even, um, all of those. Surely if modern man can be a, die and have a ghost, then surely all of those must have ghosts. All the Neolithic people must have. I mean, we would be crammed with blooming ghosts, wouldn't we? There would be more sightings of ghosts if it was absolutely true. If people could come back and communicate left, right and centre. Why is it so very mysterious and why is it so few that come back? To me, it just seems a nonsense because the logic just says, where would you put them all? Um, Susie Davis says, I've had psychic experiences. I haven't seen a ghost, but I've heard them. Yes, I did check for rational and physical explanation of the sounds. When you're standing in the room of your house, though, and unseen footsteps walk past you, and then you have to conclude that you've heard a ghost. Well, you don't have to conclude you've heard a ghost, do you? You have to conclude that you've heard some sounds which aren't rational. I get that, and that you may not be able to um, understand. You see, here's my thought. When you dream... You know, if you go, I, I've, I dream very vividly and, uh, and my head, my, my mind, my brain, my mind, whatever it is, can conjure up dreams that when I'm in them, I really think it's happening. And people have hallucinations, don't they? Um, I had a friend who was not very well and she had a hallucination that people were coming up having a party in her house she was sitting there and she said the bath water she rang me up and said i don't I, I i'm a bit confused because the bath water is going down the stairs and there are people partying in my house i, I can't they won't leave i keep telling them to go or they won't go she was being serious my dad when it with his dementia was seeing things um, and so the brain can conjure these things up that we think are real. doesn't necessarily have to be a ghost. I mean, you know, you may have gone, well, there's nobody here and there's no rational explanation why I can hear footsteps. But then you've also got that whole thing about some people, some people are told if they do such and such, it's good for the, the world. God is talking to them. And if you help this person across the road, God says, you know, you must do this and it's great. 
And you think, well, okay, yeah, now that's, that's God talking to me. But then other people will hear voices in their head that says, stab this person and bung them on the fire. And you go, wait, is that God talking to you? Or is that a just, a, just, you know, a mental condition? And how do you know which one is which? Maybe God was talking to the person who said stab him. And the one that said help the person across the road could have been the mental condition. What I'm saying is that how do we know that these things that we think we hear or see are actually there? Unless it's all witnessed by several people all at once. That's that. So I'm. I'm just questioning when you say you conclude it has to be a ghost. Um, it may not be. There was certainly no hidden array of loudspeakers under the floor. No, I'm sure there wasn't. Um, they, hang on, you, you, you've got a bit more here, um, Susie Davis. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not getting at you personally. I hope you don't take it that way. They say for those who don't believe in ghosts, there can be no proof. For those who've experienced them, though, no proof is necessary. It, but isn't that a bit like the the you know the god thing that you you just believe in it um and it's until, i mean you know i'm not questioning whether you whether you believe in it you clearly do and and it's you're entitled to and no one can say you're right or wrong and and that should not be the case um for me she says it was a wake up call it prompted me to question once again the meaning of life and our place in it richard you said that we tend to get more spiritual as we get older because we are nearer death it's equally true of babies and toddlers because they've only recently left the spirit realm. Well, assuming they have left the spirit realms, of course, they may not have left. They may have just been conceived and started their journey. So they've started from nothing, but that might, but, but, you know, nothing is nothing, isn't it? You've got to define what nothing means. It means nothing. So the, in other words, nothing before it, that's, the logic. I'm, I'm not saying I'm right, by the way. Tracy Jane says, it's my brother's birthday today. Uh, he would have been 57, but he died when he was 20. I do believe in energy still being around after you die. My mum went to a medium and had some messages from him, which I totally take as true. And there's no, I mean, you can't argue with that, can you? You can't argue if somebody thinks that's the case. Tracy Jane, if that's how you believe about it, and if that's what you think, nobody can say you're wrong. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying I've never seen a ghost. I, I don't personally believe it's a fact or it's true. I think there could be a million other explanations uh, because I just think we would have, by now, we would have had some definite sense, not sense, technological way of proving it for sure um i just don't find it credible myself but that's me you may well think it credible and you may believe in it and you're so entitled to absolutely it's your belief your you know you know yourself and your family and those people in around you and you you have to take it the way you take it. I'm definitely not saying you're wrong. Uh, Jamie Boy, 1995, says in the summer of 2016, I was walking through No Such Park, which was famous during the Tudor period, as it was where No Such Palace stood. I've been in No Such Park, actually, around the Sutton Epson. I went there with Mark English, made a video, I think. When I thought I heard a man's voice come up behind me and say something, I looked behind me, but the only people around were at the other end of the path. So it couldn't have been them. No, probably wasn't. Couldn't have been uh, something or it, it could have easily been something or other or maybe my imagination. I still wonder six years later what it was. I was away in Norfolk in a, an old barn, converted barn. And um, in an Airbnb. And I woke up one morning. And I was downstairs and the person I was with was upstairs in a different room and it was a converted barn. So I was in an area where at one time animals would have been kept in. And I woke up, this was the second morning, and I felt something, a pressure like a cow sit on me. And it shocked me and I woke up properly. And I... The friend came down because he heard me go, oh, my God, what was that? And he said, what's the matter? And I said, I don't know. Something's just sat on me, but there's nothing here. Can a cow 
have a ghostly presence? People say, my mum used to say our pet dog, once it had died, would sit on the bed. I never felt that. Um, but I don't know that it was really a ghost. That's the thing. I don't know if it was really the spirit of a dead cow or a farmer who was sitting dead. I don't really, you know, I just thought, oh, I woke up. I was in a semi-state of consciousness and I felt this pressure come on me. It shocked me. But then I often have that thing where I'm lying in bed and I think I've just fallen off a cliff or fallen out of bed. And I go, oh, like that. So I, I you know, I, I think it, it, I would need something even more positive. For me, it would be if my father was to come in and sit down next to me and say, Richard, you're wasting your time. Go and get a proper job, <laughs> uh, which, he, which he would do. That's the sort of thing he would say to me, Richard. This, uh, and unless, of course, I had success, because when we had uh, our TV series Snug and Cozy on the telly, he was suddenly, he was telling everybody, he says, I encouraged him to go into uh, television, into entertainment and theatre. I encouraged him. But prior to that, it was like, you're wasting your time, son. You'll never make anything. No, nope, you're wasting your time. Just like my mother, they kept putting me down. Uh, but of course, if I had success, then they were the ones that were going, well, it was down to me. I encouraged it. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Yeah, don't know that that was really true, but it's very kind of you to tell. So if he came in now, I would believe it. Um, original Shadow Facts, talking about cyclists. Do you remember when we were talking about cyclists? The real question is, he says, he or she says, should cyclists have insurance? Not whether they should have license plates. Maybe they should have insurance because if they have accidents, they could claim on the insurance. I guess that's very true. Um, back to cyclists again. Over 20 million bikes already road ready in the UK have no register, are not registered or insurance owners or riders. Good luck trying to see in them enforce this. Yes, I'm not saying it would be easy to enforce it by any means. Uh, back to a couple more ghost things and then we'll wrap it up for today. Uh, Doodle Sparkle Cleaning says, this is a fascinating topic, right up my, speak, uh, my street about ghosts. She says, um, I've seen one thing and it was in the Mermaid Inn. It just happened to be at one of those famous inns that is full of ghosts, of course, where the uh, Hawkehurst gang used to gather together and do their uh, terrible deeds or plan their terrible smuggling things in uh, the 1750s, that sort of time. Anyway, uh, that's by the by. And it was a moving bright blue light floating across the room. Why is it that ghosts come back as a, a moving uh, bright blue light? You know, why can they not just come back in a, a, a sort of form that's a little bit more recognisable, like their self or something? I mean, I'm just asking. Anyway, sorry about that doodle sparkle cleaning. I'm not uh, questioning you. My mum and sister have experienced many things. My mum and dad see the tail of a cat in their hat, just the tail, the tail of the cat in their house, in the corridor. Not their cat, just the tail they see. Uh, they don't have anything like floaters in their eyes. I've had floaters. They're terrible things. You know, they flo it's, um, I don't know what causes floaters. Maybe somebody can tell me. Um, and they float about, uh, you know, it's like part of the retina, I think, that falls, you know, bits and bobs. And they float around. In you sure it's not something like that? I believe they exist myself. I haven't seen much. So many things that cannot be explained. It's got to be paranormal. I love it when people say it's got to be. It's got to be. I can't explain it, so therefore it has to be this. Um, does it, though? Uh, but uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for that. I do appreciate it. I, I, I'm not, you know, please don't think I'm taking the mickey or getting, uh, you, you know, um, not believing you. It's just one of those subjects. Some people believe it. Some people find it difficult. Louise Lage says, as a retired RN, <clears throat> RN, what, what I, I should know that. Is that a nurse, an RN? I think that's a nurse, isn't it? Um, I can say that I've had many workplace experiences with people who have passed on, or as I would say, died. Uh, I've seen and felt presences work late into the evening night on my shifts over the 25 years. And I've also experiences personally that I've seen and heard things that I cannot explain. It became a standing joke when that whenever I cared for somebody that evening, 
who had died, it's likely that they would turn up again at my home. How do they know where you live? Within 24 hours as a final goodbye. I think that one has to have an open soul and have sensory awareness. I can walk into a room or a building or even a community and tell if there are spirits there. My old flat had a lot of paranormal activity with cupboards slamming shut in the middle of the night, mists floating across the room, objects floating about and even uh, relocated to odd places. I find this... Thanks for putting this, Louise. And and again, I'm not questioning you or your belief or your thoughts. But why is it that uh, ghostly things are like mists? Well, a mist surely is is just a uh, part of the weather formation, isn't it? A mist, it's it's to do with uh, heat and moisture in the air, isn't it? Isn't it? And why is it that ghosts want to slam cupboards? What's what's? Why would they do that? If they can slam a cupboard, surely they could pick up a pen and say, "I am the dead person of so." And why do ghosts, whenever they're represented, always been? represented in a spooky sort of way i you know i can do that i think here i am the the ghost ghost of yesterday morning morning. that sounds more like the misterons doesn't it this is the voice of the misterons we know you can hear it um I'm, i'm just questioning because it just seems like there's this sort of genre that we automatically put ghostly things oh yeah it's a ghost it has to behave like this that's what i'm that's what I'm questioning. Why do they always have to behave like this? One thing I did think about is, uh, you know, if you walk down the street, for all you know, all those people... I wrote this in a children's book that I called The Ghost Detective. Um, and my thesis was, you walk down... The, the ghost detective says, you walk down the street, and all those people you don't know, chances are they're actually ghosts. You know, they, they're people you don't know. They're, they're people on the bus they, looking out the window and all that. They could all be ghosts. You don't know them. So you don't know they're not ghosts. That was the, that was the little conundrum that I was putting in my children's book just to make kids... It never went anywhere, by the way. Don't look it up. Um, it's uh, The Ghost Detective. I wrote two, two uh, episodes. So anyway, I, I think, actually, if you put it on YouTube, The Ghost Detective, Richard Vobes, you'll, you'll see there are some videos there in which I read it out. Um, a lot of it's to do with um, the uh, acid bath murderer. So, you know, if you're a little bit squeamish, perhaps not for you. Uh, Ed Sage, Seamaster34, says, uh, talking about uh, ghosts, it, but he's gone on to the computer thing. He says, the Atari ST was the first computer I used for music production. Brings back memories of Fostec 8-track reels. Ah, yes. And Soundcraft. Did you ever use a Soundcraft when I left school? After the printing job, I went to work in a sound studio and we had a a Soundcraft 8-track. I think it was either a 1-inch or 2-inch wide tape. Happy memories to those analogue days. Anyway, that's it. So uh, I'm questioning, how do you escape from screens? Not ghosts, screens. You know, the, 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 the interweb. How do you get away from videos and YouTube and TikTok? What do you do? Do you play cards? Do you go for a walk? Do you walk the dog? Do you clean the chimney? Do you do household chores? What, what do you do to get away from screens? Are you somebody... Or do you embrace them and go, do you know what? I've been, I have been at the coal face pulling coal out of the pit and all I want to do now is switch on the box or look at a screen. Let me know in the comments. It'd be fascinating to read them and I will catch up hopefully with you very soon, possibly even tomorrow. Bye-bye.